What's up my friends, US Army veteran Christopher Chaos, and today we're trying out a new kind of idea where I'm gonna be talking about some headlines from the past week that are happening in the United States Army. In this case, this is the first week of February that we're gonna be talking about as far as headlines. So things that kind of happened, right? We got some things with the whole AR670-1 change policy, uh, some kind of you know backlash, I guess, from that as well. We have some soldiers that accidentally drank some antifreeze that I'll get more in depth with. But first, let's kind of start off with our very first story. Some new required training could be coming to all soldiers in an effort to make every soldier capable of taking down enemy drones. This would focus on small unmanned drones that could be used against US forces. Recent incidents have seen enemy forces using small drones for reconnaissance, as well as attaching explosives to the drones to detonate on US military. The plan is to demonstrate equipment in April that could be used to take down the drones. The Army would be creating a joint counter UAS training program to focus on teaching soldiers how to use the equipment. The equipment will likely rely on tech that would be able to jam the drone's signal and cause it to crash when you aim the device at the drone or use lasers that could heat up the drone and disable it. If all goes as planned, the Army would like this training to begin around October of this year. Now this would no most likely not be something like you would do in basic training at AIT. It's probably something that, you know, once you're done with all of your initial training, you go to your unit and it's maybe like some kind of annual requirement or some kind of, you know, thing that they periodically revisit and are constantly training on to make sure everybody knows how to use this equipment and is properly trained on so that way when they are deployed, they are in that situation where they can you know, use this device to probably aim at a drone and cause it to crash to prevent them from doing things like I talked about, either reconnaissance or maybe even attaching explosives as that is one of the ones I remember hearing as a recent thing like in Afghanistan, that they were attaching like grenades or explosives or whatever and flying the drones into US convoys to detonate like on the gunners or into you know uh, soldiers that are on patrols. Let's move into the next story. Uh, last week, I actually did a video on some of the new changes for AR670-1. Mainly, those changes apply to females, and there's a lot of male soldiers that are not happy with that, mainly because you know they wanted the beard. They, everybody wants the dang beard, right? So they're unhappy with that, and we're gonna be talking about that. If you had not seen my video that talked about the changes to AR670-1, a little card that kind of popped up on the screen. If you like, check that out. Come back to this part of the video, click on it, check out the video, whatever you wanna do. But let's talk about what's happening since the Sergeant Major of the Army has announced these changes. The Sergeant Major of the Army recently outlined some changes to AR-670-1 that go into effect late February. Men in the United States Army were not too happy with the changes as most of the regulation changes apply to female soldiers and do not address any changes to beards in the United States Army. The Sergeant Major of the Army has addressed some of the complaints on Twitter and said, for each recommendation, we brought in different subject matter experts, dermatologists, EO leaders, psychologists, etc., to discuss medical, emotional, and cultural impacts of the current policies and help explain how changes could impact different demos. Again, these discussions were specifically framed to look at how our current policies failed to accurately represent the soldiers in our formations. Because of this, policies regarding men's facial hair was not a topic. Beards are regularly discussed policies adopted for them. But nonetheless, soldiers are not happy. So unhappy that they have created a change.org petition that as of recording this video is already up to almost 100,000 signatures. The change.org reads, with all of the progressive change in US Army policy on uniform wear and appearance, it is only right soldiers should be able to grow beards in a garrison environment. If earrings, ponytails, and nail polish do not take away from the image of professionalism, then a beard should not either. The British Royal Air Force and the Canadian Armed Forces allow facial hair. The Dutch and Swedish militaries permit them in many circumstances. It's time to make the change. Let's see how many signatures we can get on board to let them hear our necessities. So will that be enough to allow them to revisit the beard policy? I, I don't know, I guess time will kind of tell. There are people on different sides of this. There are people that are, you know, obviously really, really, really want, you know, to have the beard. There are also other individuals that, you know, don't want to have that, right? There are people that feel that it makes it unprofessional, uh, other complications, whatever the case could be. I saw one quote from a major saying that because it looks cool isn't a good enough reason for them to change the policies. So I, I don't really know. I've also seen some people that you know don't care either way. They're like, I don't care if we have beards, don't have beards, it doesn't matter to me either way. The tricky thing I, I think would be in there is that uh, if you did allow beards, that you have to somehow really regulate it in a certain way. There are individuals out there that can't grow a beard, right? It's gonna be really patchy, it's gonna be all over the place, whatever the case could be. And how, how do you kind of address that? You'd have to kind of word it specifically to say, you know, maybe only people that can grow full on facial hair. I, I don't really know. I mean, how do you even kind of regulate that? Otherwise. If you are, do kind of leave it open to just anyone, then are you gonna have these people that have these really patchy, weird looking beards that are walking around in uniform that 
look like they got in a fight with a cat or something. I don't really know how it's gonna end up kind of working out. If you can grow a regular beard and keep it really short, then I don't see a problem with it, right? It's a good good morale kind of booster. It makes you feel, you know, a little bit more like a man, I guess, in a way, you know? It makes you blend in a little bit more with the civilian populace and all that kind of stuff. So, in my opinion, I don't, I don't know. I guess it really wouldn't matter too much, but there is definitely some tricky kind of situations with it. I don't really see the Sergeant Major of the Army probably going forward and approving this. There was even like uh, recently he did like an Instagram story kind of session of, you know, what soldiers were talking about in their counseling sessions recently. And even one of them, one of the soldiers that kind of like, you know, replied to his story said that, you know, soldiers want beards. And his reply was essentially trying to tell him that join the special forces then. Special forces, you know, they're not just completely relaxed where they can grow beards whenever they want. They still have to have a reason for that, but if they have a good enough reason for it, like, you know, they're on a mission that's going to require them to kind of blend in with the civilian populace, then yeah, they, they're allowed to grow beards and all that kind of stuff. But if they're just back in garrison during training, nothing specifically as far as a reason why they need to grow beards, then yeah, they can't just go skipping, you know, shaving every day. So let's move into our last and final story, which is talking about some Fort Bliss soldiers that accidentally consumed some antifreeze. 11 U.S. Army soldiers out of Fort Bliss, Texas, were sent to the hospital after drinking antifreeze. The 11 soldiers, which include one warrant officer, two NCOs, and eight enlisted soldiers, were nearing the end of a field problem when they thought they were consuming alcohol, which is also an activity not allowed while in the field. It turns out that what the soldiers thought was alcohol also contained antifreeze. It's not known at this time how the antifreeze got mixed with the alcohol, but some say it might have been hidden in an antifreeze container to sneak it into the field and still contain some antifreeze when the alcohol was added to the container. When soldiers realized that something was not right, soldiers came forward and also disclosed who was involved. As of recording this video, nine of the soldiers were released from the hospital, but two remained in the hospital with one of them in ICU, but their conditions were improving. This whole situation kind of reminds me of that scene out of Superbad where they are putting alcohol inside of the uh, detergent jugs to try to sneak it out of the party to get it to their party. There's a possibility, you know, probably still left with detergent inside that jug. You may not be able to completely clean it out very well unless you really spend the time to do so. And maybe that's something that happened here where someone wanted to sneak in alcohol. They used some antifreeze containers to be able to sneak it into the field by putting it with all of the other chemicals or whatever. And, you know, it wasn't cleaned out properly. And so you end up with still a little bit of antifreeze in there mixing in with the alcohol. So at this time, the, it is unknown as far as what punishment may come down. It's still under investigation, so they're still looking into everything. There probably is going to be, you know, some you know strict things for like that warrant officer, uh, NCOs, and the and the uh, enlisted soldiers could possibly be, you know, get reduced in rank, maybe get some, you know, extra duty, maybe some, you know, reduction in pay. It may just kind of depend on what the leadership really wants to pursue. But you know, we probably won't find out what that you know punishment is because they're probably not going to really, you know, continue on with the story and release what the punishment came out of it was. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But I definitely feel like that warrant officer potentially could be the one facing the most as he is still considered an officer. Uh, the NCO and the or two NCOs and the enlisted soldiers, possibly reduction in rank. We'll just have to see if we find out any more information after it comes out. So those are some of the stories I grabbed from that first week of February, 2021. If you want to see me do more of these videos, maybe more often, maybe once a week kind of a thing, let me know, let me know down in the comment section. If you also wanna read like the full articles as to the stories I talked about, I will provide them down in the description box down below. There's also other links for like social media and everything else too, if you wanna check those out. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out. I'm Christopher Chaos and I'll see you next time. See ya.